Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Nancy Lydia Mahaffey, and today I would like to talk to you a little bit about the Ethiopian judicial system. The Ethiopian judicial system is like a political whip, really. There's no justice so far I've seen. If they don't like what you do, whether you're a journalist, human rights activist, or even a merchant, or you could be an investor, and if they want what you have, they will have it, and they will put you in jail for a cooked up charges, false witnesses, and a kangaroo court, you have no other chances. Previous video, I made up a video about the darkest day for the Amhara's history, June 22nd, 2019, when the Amhara's lost their best and brightest. They were assassinated and that the plot, still puzzling, one day we will find out the truth but the aftermath of that, Dr. Abbey's government decided to arrest, to arrest anyone and everyone that they think might be a threat. So they arrested the Baldaras Council. The Baldaras Council is a civic organization that started in Addis Ababa by world-renowned journalist and human rights activist, Mr. Skinderlega. It was all peaceful fighting for true democracy, and their main purpose was for the Addis Ababa residents to be present, represented by their own people, to have their own say in their own city. That was a threat, the fact that it was so threatening that Dr. Abbey threatened to go to war over that. So you have a group, our left group, in the west side of Ethiopia, robbing 17 Ethiopian commercial banks. You don't go to war over that, but you're willing to go to war with um, human rights activist, journalist, that he is setting a peaceful council to voice his concern about his city and the residents in it. That itself says a lot about, I think, about Dr. Abi. And then... I mean, you've seen my video on how frustrating it was for Dr. Abi to not say anything, act or anything for the last two weeks when 86 people, and we have videos where people were butchered, people were uh, dismembered, their internal organ was opened, people like female breast was cut, cut off. People were beheaded, people were killed and with rocks and sticks, and they were dragged on the streets. And this man took him 10 days to come out and talk. I don't know how many days it took him, but it took him quite a while. But it only took him hours to declare the Amhara uh, uh, killings or assassination an attempted coup. An attempted coup by one of our favorite son. General Assam Nozige, which General Assam Nozige didn't have a chance to defend himself, really. He was already made to be number one enemy of the state. He was killed um, the, the, following, the following days. So he didn't even have a chance to come to justice and defend himself. So when, when I talk, uh, following that, they arrested anyone they could find a threat. Dr. Habi has already shown his concern. The Amhara was organizing by ethnicity. Now, how funny is that? I mean, that is so absurd. The Oromos were organizing themselves for 50 years. The Tigrais were for that as well. They fought as an ethnicity to liberate their ethnicity. The Amhara refused to organize themselves as an ethnicity and that's, the, you know, their land was taken. They, I mean, we lost people in millions. I mean, systematically, there was a strategic methods to isolate the Amhara economically, educationally, politically, and everything was systematically to oppress the Amhara so it would not be a threat. Even they established a party the Amhara Democratic Party that they established and they put upon the Amhara were not Amharas. They were not Amharas. That, the, the, you know, it was a known fact. But finally, when the changes came, 
And the true Amharas came forward to lead this party. When the national uh, movement of Amharas started, when all that started, and that party especially got accepted by, I mean, Amharas all over, inside the country, outside the country, because it brought up the true questions of the Amharas. It was a party for Amhara, by Amharas, and that really was frightening to, um, I think, to Dr. Abi. So he also has urged, you know, the Amhara to not organize. He used the coup d'etat. Afterwards, they arrested about 500 members of um, these uh, national movement of Amharas. The Amhara, and, um, I think, National Amhara Movement. And among them, the top leaders, and specifically Mr. Christian Tardele. Mr. Christian Tardele is brilliant. He can debate. He's educated. He, he's eloquent in his speech. This young man was a threat. I don't think anybody can beat him on a debate. If there was a government election and he, he was put up with someone, I, ha I think anyone who's debating him has no chance to debate him. So he was a threat and they put him, he, he was arrested. Now, I live in America. In America, if you were suspect, you'd be taken, but within 48 hours, the police have to find something and bring you to court and start a case against you. Otherwise, you, you are either guaranteed the bail to go or the case will be dropped if they don't have enough evidence. These people, and in African prison, they languished for months in dark rooms, two meter by two meter, in places where they have no mattresses. Sometimes there's water, the mattress gets soaked. It was unhealthy, there was no fresh air, they weren't allowed to go out. Even water for sanitary purposes were not provided for them for months at a time. They languished in that for, like it's going for four months now. They would appear before court, and then the uh, prosecutor would say, we're still gathering more evidence give us 28 days. And I'm puzzled why they say 28 day, days. Is that to remind us the 28 years that, we, they, that Ethiopia was ruled under the apartheid system? And so they've been going back and forth. And then suddenly, they, you know, they, they have no witnesses either, or they have uh, no evidence to prove and they, they would drop the charges, the person will go, or his bail uh, will be the bail right, like he can have a bail bond and he can leave. Now, what happened for the time he lost for that many months he's been in? What happened for the psychological and physical and uh, you know, mental um, trauma that he experienced? Obviously, nobody's answering for that. Now. What ha uh, two weeks ago, you, you remember the videos that I put up, the massacre, I call it the Manja genocide, where they were butchering people and everyone was suddenly talking about Jawar Muhammad and Dr. Abi and Oromia, Oromia police, Oromia special forces. Now the world is turning their attention on what is happening with, in Ethiopia and Oromia region, and they want to change um, public's opinion, so they released people that were, they arrested, they arrested, and the very elementary plot that was done on Baldaras, because they, if they arrest Mr. Uh, Skinder Naga, because he's a world-renowned uh, journalist, the world would be talking. That's, that would hurt the image of the Dr. Abi's government. So instead, they decided to arrest everyone that's around him, thinking if they do that, that would weaken his support, that would weaken his uh, work at all. And I think that was just so pathetic. I mean, I think they should come up with any better in the next time. So uh, they released the people that they arrested during that time. Now we're seeing interviews, interviews of people of 
those journalists and the members of Balderas, as well as some of the uh, the Amhara National Party, uh, the, the movement, some of them were released. They all almost saying the same thing. The interrogation, the questioning that went on, was not anything related to the coup d'etat that mentioned that to that was used to arrest them. They were asked how their the organizations that they belong, either the National Movement or the Balderas Council, how it is organized, where they get their financing, and all that stuff. So it was basically used as a political uh, means, one, to gather information, uh, second, to punish or to oppress. So these... Uh, uh, politically motivated um, charges that are being brought upon them or accused of uh, that are being used. So the judicial system is not free of political system in Ethiopia. And rather, the political system is using the, the judicial uh, system as a political whip to punish those that are, they deem as a threat, that they deem that they they would hurt their cause or they see them that they would um, be an obstacle for them to succeed. So Dr. Abi is using these uh, purposes, the same uh, laws that he called they were illegal, the same laws that he said that the government used to terrorize its citizens, he's using them today. Now they are bringing Mr. Christian Tadele and 13 others, including the um, the gentleman that was accused that he assassinated the two generals in Addis Ababa on June 22nd, he has recovered, he's coming, but there's no lawyer that's standing for him. His case is being seen behind the doors. So all these 13 people coming, I think they are being made as scapegoats for what happened in uh, June 22nd. This crime, the assassination, was not investigated by an independent body. We don't know what exactly went on, what the true story is behind it. Dr. Abe shut the internet and set everything in his own narrative. So as we see it, from our viewpoint, is a plot. It shouldn't be seen behind, this, behind the door. It should be open for the media, for the people to see. And uh, they say it because of the witnesses, uh, the, you know, they could do a, a witness protection if they need to. But this case shouldn't be seen behind the clothes because it is a cooked up charge. It is a false witness. It is in a, congru in a kangaroo court. These people have no chance even to defend themselves while the questioning is related to the organizations and the parties they belong to, not specifically to the crime that just happened. So I do hope that everyone who believes that justice should be served, including for the people who were assassinated and the people who died throughout all that turmoil, as well as to the people who are standing today that as a defendants, that truth should, the truth should come out and the true criminals behind all this dirty politics and plot should be punished for what they've done that should speak up now. Because TPLF has used this. TPLF has used it on thousands of people where they come up with the trumped up charges, used false witnesses, and the same judges who at night torture the uh, defendants, and then they are the one who passes the, uh, the, the uh, judgment in a court. They have used that tactics. They have used that methods in the past. And I do call upon you, all Ethiopians, regardless of your ethnicity and the religion, that you will speak up for these people, that an independent party should investigate uh, what happened in June 22nd and bring the people who actually committed these crimes, who plotted it, and who made it happen. Not the political activists, the organizers, the journalists, and the regular uh, soldiers and people, even farmers. Anyone that seems to be seen as a threat was thrown into jail for things that they have not done. So I do call on you to voice your concerns. Shout with us, shout for justice, shout for equality, and so we can see a brighter future for Ethiopia. Let's stand as one in unity for humanity and justice. 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you'll come back and watch more and stand up with us again. Thank you. Until next time, be well.